What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Y'all hear that? How great. How great. Sing it. It's our God. Ooh, happy Sunday, y'all. Happy Sunday. Ooh, let me get this down a little bit for y'all. Happy Sunday. What is going on? It's your girl saying. How's y'all week been? How's y'all week been? Did you, have you been having a good week? It's been positive for you. Um, you've been going through some rough patches. Have you been praying? How's our Father been looking out for you? Have you been reading your Bible? I gotta admit to you, I, I stumbled this week. There was, there was one day I didn't read it, and I was like, and it didn't hit me until like I went to bed and I was praying before I went to bed. And in the middle of my prayer, I was like, God, I, I, I didn't read my Bible today. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, I got you tomorrow, God. I promise I'm going to read it tomorrow. I got you. I read it. Other than that, it's been a positive week for me. I hope it's been a wonderful, wonderful week for you guys as well. You know, Sunday is my favorite day of the week. Got a really good uh, show for today. I got three great videos. The first video. Uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on, hold on. We're not ready just yet. Calm down. <laughs> the video ready. The video is definitely ready to go. But, um... I have three really good videos for today, and they're very positive to get all of our spirits up. You know what I'm saying? So, for the first video of Church Sundays, remember last week? We, that's what we're going to call it now. I actually made a playlist because, you know, I have so many videos. Everything was just under the same Reacts playlist. I have a playlist now called Church Sundays where every week since I started doing this is in that playlist. So, if you ever want to go back and be like, I really like that one video or... Where's the one video where they were praying? Go to the playlist. If I remember, I will put the link in the description box so you just go straight there. But first video of the day is from a channel titled 100 Huntley. I've actually seen this before and I did not realize, well actually I've seen this parodied before and I didn't realize what they were parodying. And I watched a video a while back and it's a really good show. I like it a lot. From his show, the video is titled I didn't believe in God until he took everything from me. Let's go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and see what she's talking about. I don't remember yeah. four hours prior to the accident. Um, like I said, like you said, I was in a coma uh, for about five days afterwards. I hit my head so hard, almost bled out at the scene. They used the jaws of life to get me out of the vehicle. Mm. I was drinking oh. and driving. I wasn't paying attention to the road, but obviously I was so drunk or I hit my head so hard that I, I don't have a real memory of what led up to that moment. Mm -hmm. um, I was airlifted uh, to Sunnybrook Hospital and uh, the nurses and doctors, you know, and God did a miracle on me. Wow. Yeah. Take me back to what, who Christine was on June 24th. Well, um, I was a restorative hygienist mm -hmm. and I, you know, was making great money. Mm -hmm. I thought I ha had arrived. Mm. You know, I, I had a great job, great friends, an amazing family, um, but I always knew that something just wasn't right. You did know. I knew, mm. I knew. Like there's always those times where it's like, I have all of this, but why am I still sad? Mm. With my alone time, why am yeah. I still, you know, why am I still sad? So, Yo, I went through the same thing. I never told y'all this, but um, those who watched the one video where I, was, where I said I had a resale business, at the peak of that, I was, I remember one point, it was like in the very beginning, I was pulling in like a thousand a day in sales. And because I was spending so little on product, I was going to like thrift stores at that point. I wasn't going anywhere else because I didn't know what I was doing when I started doing that. So I'm at thrift stores. I'm spending like $20 at a thrift store one day, $10, $20 another day. But the items I were getting were like high ticket resellers, right? So I now... I'm like having thousand dollar days. And I'm just like, yo, this is dope. I would be in my room, I swear on everything. My days would start out with me playing Rocket League and 2K. And it would end with me playing Rocket League 2K. I would BS for most of the day and I put in like maybe like two to four hours of just doing the resale and I was bringing in that type of money. But I was still depressed. And I couldn't figure it out. And I used to tell like my boyfriend and my friends, I'm like, I just don't get it. like. I'm living the dream. I'm not doing anything and I'm making money. Why am I depressed? <laughs> like, why am I so sad? 
Couldn't figure it out. If you've been following me, I've said in videos before, like, ever since coming over Christianity, I have not had those problems. I've been good. I've been 100. So I understand everything that she is saying. So, yeah. So what did you, what did you do to kind of calm that sadness? I drank. I drank and I drank and I partied with my friends. I did drugs. I, you know, and I thought that that was fulfilling and I thought that that was just me partying, but it was really just me trying to fill, mm. you know, so that I wouldn't be alone and I wouldn't be sad. Okay, I never took it that far. <laughs> I never took it that far, y'all. When I tell you I don't like the taste of alcohol and I never was smoking and all that, I'm serious. It was like that prior to me becoming a religious. I had a few times if we were just out somewhere and people were buying me drinks, I didn't want to be rude. So I drunk it and I would get, like I ended up getting drunk off those experiences, but I did not like it. This was purposeful. I didn't go that far. I didn't go that far. Yeah. And so I'm reading this list here. So injuries, <laughs> shattered hip, yes. lacerated liver, yeah. brain injury, yes. collapsed lungs, broken leg. You are sitting in this hospital yeah. bed. Yeah. I mean, you're just broken. Yes. Internally yeah. as well as externally. Yeah. But your sister, Gosh, yeah, bless her. Oh my god, kind goodness. of this angel in this story. <laughs> yeah, she really is. She, uh, she came to my bedside. Uh, she didn't leave my bedside. She was. Uh, she she worked in Burlington. Would travel all the way to Sunnybrook Hospital just to be with me every single night to pray with me. And I didn't believe in God at the time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I remember. Uh, when I finally kind of came to and I was out of the coma and I was starting to, things were starting to make sense and they had told me, you know, this is kind of what happened. You know, I, I wouldn't want to go back to sleep because when I was in the coma, it was, it was terrifying. It was like, I remember everything mm. from that coma and it was just like a horrible nightmare. So I didn't want to go back to sleep. So she would come and she would pray with me and she started reading to me a book called Captivating by Stacey L. Eldridge. Yeah. And it was through that and through her prayers and the Christian music that she gave to me that I found peace. And then I started to really, really question, like, who is God? Mm -hmm. You know, how come he loves me like this book says he loves me? Why were you all of a sudden open to that conversation? Okay. Well, I think that it was, you know, I'd, I'd, had, I'd lost everything at that point. You know, I thought I had everything mm -hmm. and it was all taken from me in one moment and so yeah like it was I had no choice in that moment but to question those things it's interesting because you were talking about this lifestyle where you were circulating where, with your friends yeah, yeah and then I noticed in the story that your sister was there where were your friends um, I you know what I think two of them came to visit me in the hospital um, and that was short-lived mm. you know uh, they just kind of disappeared Mm. You know, one visited me wow. at home, but I mean, we're talking months, uh, like two months in the hospital, yeah. months and months of recovery after that. It, the, the full recovery took almost four years. Wow. I had a surgery three years later. Like it was just, you know, it was a lot of recuperation and the friends that I had, you know, as wonderful as I thought that they were. And, you know, I'm not saying they're not good people because yeah. they are, but um, they just didn't have the stamina to stay mm. with me. Mm. You know, so I bless mm. them. <laughs> so what was happening? They wasn't really down and solid for you like you thought they were, which is sad. It's also interesting, her, um, she said the two months in the hospital where her sister came every day, so she's like reading the book, she's hearing the music. That's so, not me being in a hospital, but that's that two month period of just hearing Christian stuff nonstop and you're just like, oh, let me go ahead and, and become Christian. That's literally what happened to me. <laughs> You've heard my story many a times on this channel. Like that's literally what happened to me. And it's crazy too, because once all that happened, how she said she was feeling the peace. That's what I felt. That's exactly what I felt. I believe in all of this. I mean, I guess that's why I became Christian, but the whole, the spiritual warfare, prayer, the, the peace and calmness you get, it's real, man. It can't be beat. Can't be beat. Tapping in your heart towards Jesus and how did you start to see that change? Yeah, my sister kept talking to me about um, like her C group girls, like her connect girls. Yeah. And I was bedridden, like my, I actually got moved from Sunnybrook to my parents' home and they set up their whole living room there for me. And in that, 
um, she would always come and she would, you know, wash my hair, do my nails, whatever I need, because I was bedridden. And I was just like, I needed to get out of the house so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and like, she kept talking about these wonderful girls and I was just like, I'll go. Yeah. Like, I don't know who they are, but I'll go. And uh, yeah, and it was through that, you know, like, like I found out that, you know, the, the moment the car accident happened, this entire church was praying for me. Mm -hmm. You know, these C group girls, they were all praying for me. So when I walked through the door of this woman's house, it was like, oh my goodness, Christine. You're in the walking yeah, miracle. Yeah, you're the miracle. We've yeah. been praying for you. Same thing when I entered the church. Yeah. The whole church came up and gave me a hug. But you weren't totally sold. I mean, you no. tried you so <laughs> for a while just to see. Yeah, you know, I was really, um, I was really skeptical. Um, in the coma, because it was terrifying, I remember uh, praying, um, ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff would comfort me. And I remembered that because that was taught to me when I was a young child. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't something that stuck with me, you know, but it came back in the exact moment that I needed it. And so I knew that there was something to that. And so I kind of made a promise in that, you know, like, God, if you're, if you can save me from this horrifying place, can, I will come and find you. Mm -hmm. And I remembered that promise when I got out of the coma. Mm -hmm. And so my sister started coming and, you know, and then I met all these, these C group girls and I'm like, oh, I have to do this because I made a promise. <laughs> <laughs> so I did and I started and I kept with it. And finally, like I started going to C group, then I started going to church and I would just weep in worship. Like I, I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't know it was God that was speaking to me in that time, you know. I went through the same exact thing. I, I swear on everything. When I first came in, when she's saying how she would, was weeping through, I, the same thing happened to me. I just randomly bawling my eyes and I couldn't figure it out at the time. I'm like, and I'm just sitting there like, oh. I'm like, oh, why am I crying? I am so sorry, God. It's, it's the same thing. Oh, that's that's so interesting. Uh, and so finally, about six months later, I listened to a. Um, I'm an artist, so I'm very visual. And uh, Affabel. Okay. It, it's an audio play, okay. and so you have to sit and and close your eyes and just listen to it. And a bunch of C group girls were doing this at their house one evening, and through that, after that. Um, they do the sinner's prayer. Uh -huh. And I was just bawling by that time. And I gave my heart to God uh -huh. in that moment. And then I gave my heart at church publicly the following Sunday. And Aww. now you uh, do visual arts ministry as well. Who does Aww. or what does Jesus mean to you today? Oh my goodness, everything. Mm. everything. What does that mean, everything? He is, he is, he's my salvation. Mm. Like everything that I've, oh, I'll tear, everything that I've been through. Mm. You know, um, I almost died. You know, my life could have been so much different. If I hadn't have died in that moment, you know, I would have been in a gutter easily somewhere. Mm -hmm. He is the one that picked me up and saved me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was looking up for before me. the car accident happened, I was so drunk and driving, and I remember crying out and saying, oh God, like if you're real, just fix me. I don't know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those prayers that I didn't realize just what was gonna happen. You know, and a week later the crash happened. And so I see all of these things when you look back and all of it lines up, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just such a story, mm -hmm. you know, and God was in every mm -hmm. single moment of it. He's always been there with me. And all I had to do is cry out. Yeah. He's always with us. He's always there. And like I said in other videos before, like he's waiting for you. He has his arms wide open. You can come back home. You can come back home. I had, ah, it, it's so weird. Um, a lot of you that have messaged me or left like comments from ministries, there's a gospel singer, uh, other YouTubers and stuff. And some, and one of the people that interviewed me recently, her, my interview with her is not gonna be out, I think till like January or February, but I'll get people just be like, I love the way you speak about the word and how you preach it in your videos. And that's always confused me because I'm just like, what are they talking about? Like, I'm just speaking, right? Then I notice a few of them when I say how long I've been doing this, they're like, wow, it's only a couple months? Like, you speak as someone who's been on this for like a while. And so it's just cra it's crazy how when he comes into our life, how he changes and transforms us. There was things I was doing prior to this, like, 
I can't even imagine doing those things ever again. <laughs> like, ever. Even on the most basic level, like with, when I told you guys with the resale business, I just have no desire for that at all. Like, period. I do not care about any of that. I love doing these videos and talking to y'all and doing these Sunday videos. And I can't wait to meet up with the churches for my church series and get that, that out to y'all. I love it. I love learning, all the education, all of this. Um, I always say she has a ministry now. I don't know if I'll ever go down that path because I don't want to be like a pastor or a preacher. And I know some people have told me that in comments like they like the way I, I preach and talk I just I don't know I just like speaking about it. I think I I think that's just my job now that I'm in here is to just talk about it and if plant them seeds you know but I actually had two of y'all just randomly on videos and posts that had nothing to do with the video it was telling me how y'all felt or that you needed prayer and got it and I like I had never got that before that deep and I, straight, I actually prayed for y'all. And then obviously I sent a message back, but I don't know. It's weird. I was trying to talk to my brother about it. And he said, hold on. I don't want to mince his words up. So I'm actually going to read his words. Because I, I told him everything that's been going on. And, oh, here we go. He said, there's so many hurt people out here. Makes sense that the ones enlightened are the ones nursing the hurt. Now, these are his words. These are mine. I didn't agree with them. I was like, you need to reword that. But he's also not religious, so he doesn't know how him writing this makes it sound. But he was like, you're being like God? <laughs> Hold on. No, sir. And he said, it's your walk, and he's speaking through you to help the world keep going. Um, like I said, he's not religious, so he doesn't realize how writing that sounds. Um, I guess the better way to put it I think the Holy Spirit is using me to speak the way I speak and put it out there. That's a better way of wording that, but yeah. Her, kudos to her for finding the Lord. That's crazy. She said, if, if, please break me down and change me. He broke you all right. <laughs> he broke you all right. But that was needed because now you saw your friends. Wasn't really your friends. Your sister brought the right people into your life. And now you have a ministry. So Kudos to you. Kudos to you. With that being said, let me know what you guys think about the video or any of my thoughts in the comment section down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're when I drop a video. Hit the community tabs from time to time because I do put information in there, uh, updates or just things that's going on. You guys can check in with that. And uh, I will see you. I will see you at 3 p.m. EST. Peace.